we are going to be talking about three types of questions three types of questions that you can expect to be on that lcsw exam hi welcome back to my channel mental health with melissa i'm melissa I'm a licensed clinical therapist based in California. Before we get started, please don't forget to hit that beloved like and subscribe button for more content like this. Subscribing to my channel really helps me get content out to people that are in the process of becoming a licensed clinical social worker, those interested in the mental health professions, and also our communities of color. If you are a subscriber, I apologize for not uploading a video for Wednesday because I normally upload videos every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm a little bit behind. If you watch my channel, you know that I have three jobs currently and I am in school again. And so it's a little bit chaotic in my brain. So I'm trying to get things really together. So moving on along today, I want to talk about the LCSW exam. These videos, I get a lot of DMs, questions on my social media and requests to have more content basically about questions and breaking down questions on the test. As you may or may not know, I am very much interested in teaching and that's why I'm going back to school to become a professor, hopefully. I currently have my license in clinical therapy, so I'm good on that end, but I still need to get my PhD in so that I can hopefully do something more along the lines of adjunct teaching in the future. So until then, I love helping out those that are studying and anything that has to do with academia, I'm very passionate about. So if you have not yet watched the three things that you need to know to pass the LCSW exam, I'm going to link it down below. So don't forget to click that because that's going to give you a lot of helpful information. And I also, my last video was breaking down a best or most question on the LCSW exam. So you're going to want to head over to that video that I'll also link down below. But today we are going to be talking about three types of questions that you can expect to be on that LCSW exam. So if you're interested in watching, then please stay tuned. Okay, so in my other video, I do talk about um, the best and most question and I break that down. But today I want to further that and kind of talk about three different questions that will be on that LCSW exam. So because I've already done a video on the best and most question, I still wanna start off this video by putting that on here because that's one of the questions that you're gonna see a lot of on the LCSW exam. And we can kind of use that and also in addition to that, include a uh, vignette. So the best most question is usually broken into extension of the vignette question. So that's the first question that you can expect on the LCSW exam. A vignette, if you're not familiar, is very similar to a case study or um, a story that you're gonna read about a client or about an individual. And then after you read that paragraph of that vignette and case study, it's then going to ask you what you should either do next what is the best option to do, or what is the most important thing to follow up with next. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, it's really testing your ability to determine what the next or best steps are according to uh, the NASW Code of Ethics and the LCSW exam. It is not a subjective question in nature, although we may think that it's what is the best scenario according to the LCSW exam and how the LCSW exam thinks. So we wanna study what their mode of thinking is as opposed to our clinical um, opinions because there may be several things that you may choose personally or subjectively, but we're learning about what the LCSW exam wants us to do. I wanna give you an example here. Alrighty, so we're going to be going over this first question which is a first, best, or most type of question. 
So a newborn baby is being cared for in the NICU after being born with special needs that require an extended hospital stay. The pediatric doctor refers the parents to the hospital social worker. The worker needs to explore which of the following first. So the first response is parents' ability to care for the infant. B, parents' reaction to having a baby with birth deficits. C, parents' available support, or D, parents' understanding of complications. So if we're looking over the option A first, parents' ability to care for the infant. Now, although this is definitely an important first, uh, an important step, is it going to be the first step? Let's see if there's anything else that kind of stands out to us that we would wanna assess first. B, parents' reaction to having a baby with birth defects or birth deficits. This seems like it would be important to have the parents be able to process what's going on. As therapists and social workers, we want to make sure that we're able to really meet our clients where they're at, assess how they're reacting to a stressful situation. So this actually seems like the first thing that we would want to do. But just to be sure, let's read the other options. Parents available support system. Okay, again, that's definitely important to assess, but compared to B, I think B is still important to assess first. And D, parents understanding of complications. So although this may be uh, similar to option B, Understanding kind of goes hand in hand with the ability to care for the infant. So we're still going want, going to want to have the parents process where they're at. So B would be your answer. The second type of question that you're going to see on the LCSW exam is a definition question. So you can probably think of the definition question as something that a lot of professions and a lot of different exams test. And basically what that is, is just terminology. So there's a lot of uh, defense mechanism terminology definition questions that are asked where it talks about a type of defense mechanism and then it asks you which defense mechanism is this. So next is the definition type of question. So a therapist is stuck in traffic and is 15 minutes late to meet with a client for a session. The therapist is apologetic and the client states okay. When the session starts, the client accuses the therapist of being annoyed with the client. The defense mechanism the client is using is A, avoidance. Now what is avoidance? We know that if we've been studying for the test that avoidance is going out of um, one's way to really make sure that that situation is avoided and not dealt with or not spoken about. So does that kind of sound like what this is, what's going on? It does sound like the client maybe want to be avoiding it. Let's see what else we have. Projection. Okay, so if we know what projection means, projection means um, when we're, when one is dealing with Uh, an emotion but doesn't want to deal with it themselves they will put that emotion or that feeling on somebody else so the client may be annoyed with the therapist and as a result is telling the therapist that the therapist is annoyed with the client so this seems to be the right answer projection suppression is similar to avoidance but um, the difference is is suppression you're really Um, as opposed to avoiding a situation, you're really consciously making an effort to suppress feelings. And introjection is definitely not the, um, what is being talked about with this situation here. And a third type of question that you can expect to be on the LCSW exam are theory questions. So for the LCSW exam, you are expected to know developmental theories according to all of those pretty well-known developmental theorists, including Freud, Erickson, and I'm sure you can think of more. There will most likely be questions about a stage of development, and you will have to state what stage of development is most accurate to what is being asked in the question, or which theorist is the developmental stage being based off of. This is a example of a developmental stage question or a theory-based question. 
A 28-year-old single woman is in treatment with a therapist. She demonstrates the inability, inability to accept responses or statements that happen in college classes and relationships. She also is like this with her therapist. According to Eric Erickson, this is an example of what developmental stage. So A, initiative versus guilt. B, identity versus role confusion. C, autonomy versus shame. Or D, trust versus mistrust. So I'm not gonna go over all of these, um, but if this is something that you do want me to go over, I can always do another video. The answer to this question is trust versus mistrust. And the reason why is because in Eric's, Erickson's stages of development, he talks about trust versus mistrust. You can look up the definitions to these, but basically um, she is having a real issue with trusting relationships and um, those that are in her college classes with her. And so this is going to be trust versus mistrust. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this. Let me know if this was helpful. I really enjoy doing videos like this. I'd like to do more, but I just want to know if they're beneficial at all. Otherwise, I like to change my content a little bit. So let me know in the comments. The comments really help me a lot in um, trying to figure out what is going to be most beneficial to um, those that are watching the videos. So until next time, managing mental health matters.